Ladies and gentlemen, on this week's edition of the 7 Days Podcast, we're going to be talking about Edge using AEW as a pawn to get a better deal with WWE. Vince McMahon changing the Royal Rumble winners, MVP wrestling his last match, Ring of Honor bringing a old championship back, and Tony Khan getting a specific order from TNT. All this plus so much more on this week's 7 Days Podcast. How are y'all doing today? Seven Days Podcast here on Saturday, February 1st. I can't believe it's February already. I mean, goddamn, it was just January. Like, not too long ago. I, I still feel like the year just started. Like, bro, like, even at, at certain points, I still feel we're in 2019. Not even 2020. We're still in 2019. Anyways, you know... A lot of things been going on as of late. You know, a lot of people returning to wrestling. A lot of people leaving wrestling, you know, etc. Uh, with me, though, I don't know. Like, for me, as far as some content goes and YouTube, it's like... I, I just... I'm I'm in between now. I, I used to be, like, so, like, out of it. <laughs> like, I was on a three-month reign as far as... Um, like, not paying attention to wrestling, or at least, like, not, like, making content at all. It's funny. I feel like I haven't made content in so long, but yet, when I look at the videos I've done, it's like, I haven't posted in, like, five days. Like, not even a week or two weeks. No, no, five days. Five days. <laughs> I, like, it, it, it's weird. It's weird. But yeah, as far as school goes, you know, I've been trying to uh, get my stuff together, trying to get everything right. At the beginning, it was a bit of a struggle for me because I didn't know where to start. I didn't know how to start, you know, be given all these assignments and just, you know, just going through the motions. I was going through the motions. I wasn't really planning out things and executing it right. I was just going through the motions. It's like, okay, this week, uh, oh, oh shit, we got this assignment. Uh, I hope I still have time to hand it in. <laughs> like, you know, like, it just, a lot, I was just going through a downward spiral for a couple of weeks. I won't lie. But, um, this week I was able to get everything done. I feel like I'm on top of the game right now. I feel like I'm in the right spot, in the right mindset, right place. You know, handed in assignments. I'm on the top of everything now. I'm clear. You know, I I can see things clearly now. Because at the beginning, you know, I was in the honeymoon phase. I'm not going to lie. I was in the honeymoon phase when uh, I went back to school. See my college buds, you know. I just see them, and it's like, oh, my God, we're back together, you know, reunited. And, you know, like, it was it was good. But I, I, I let that shit get in my head so hard to where, like, I, I just focused on being around them and not focused on what, what's important, which is school. Because... I'm not going to lie to you. Not, I'm not going to lie to anybody about this. They bring the best out of me as far as getting schoolwork done. So, I kind of depend on them in a way. It's like, okay, they're gonna, they're focused. They're ready to go. So, I'm, I should be focused as well. Do the same thing. But now, I'm good. I'm good to go. And I, I, I told myself, all right, if I'm going to upload videos again, I need to make sure my assignments are cleared. So... If I take a long amount of time off of YouTube, then I'm gonna, it's basically because I'm working on assignments and trying to get my schoolwork done, obviously. I'm not gonna sit here and, and try to, you know, do what I did years ago, five years ago, six, uh, four years ago, or three years, or, three, or even three years ago, where I would sit here, make content every week, nearly every day, and not focus what's outside of my room. Pretty much. So, school's good, going good. I actually, actually, like, I did announcing. Like, you know how, like, Justin Roberts, you know, with AEW, you know, Greg Hamilton for uh, WWE on SmackDown. Me, I did announcing for my college basketball team both the women and the men, but I, I learned from the women and I actually did one for the male. So it was a bit awkward for me, even though announcing is like the fourth thing on my list to do. Like I want to do commentary. That's my first one. Second one, 
I guess referee, if not wrestle, and then third one would be referee and or wrestle, and then fourth one would be announcing. And announcing, I did it. Had to call out for fouls and you know reading PSAs and all this stuff, pretty much. So it was a cool thing to do. And uh, I'm trying to see if I can do it again. Honestly, I was a bit nervous at first. I was all the way in my head. But I feel like if I do it again, I'll be good 100%. So that's what's been going on with me. You know, January, not a bad month so far. Hopefully, February will be a lot better. Now, I do want to mention that, you know, January, obviously, it ended off in a bad way. You know, with Kobe Bryant passing away, God rest his soul, and his daughter as well. Uh, both of them passed away along with the other passengers in the helicopter on January 26th, I believe. Uh, if not, not if not 26, yeah, I think 26. Yeah, it was like the morning of the Royal Rumble pay per view, and it was just it was just hard. I I was just sitting here, mind my business. I'm just sitting here. A friend of mine just says no in the message. I'm like. The fuck? Well, what did I do? Did I say anything? Like, what happened? And then he he sent me the link of TMZ posting uh, Kobe Bryant passes away. It's like, oh, I was like, I I I I just read it and I just immediately yelled out, no! Like, I was like, no! I was like, what? No! And and then after that, I just I. I couldn't believe what I was reading, and I was looking at other news sites and trying to find everything uh, that that put any le legitimacy behind that that post from TMZ on their website that Kobe Bryant and his daughter is gone, along with other passengers in the helicopter. So, sadly, they're gone. Uh, I feel like you know I always question myself. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not into religion and all that stuff. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to force it on you. I'm, I'm never going to do that. You, you can't do it to me. I'm just going to hear you, but I'm just going to, like, fade out so quick. <laughs> it's just, that's just how I am, honestly. But I honestly do think it's like, did God, is, is this what, is this, like, did God write this down? Like, did, did, like, did, did he plan this? Like, what, what happened? Like, is this how God wanted Kobe to go away? Damn. Could you imagine that I'm, I'm thinking like throughout his entire lifespan, you know, you know, from being born and, and, and going through a career all all to die in a helicopter crash? Like, fuck, dude. You know, like I, I'm just thinking about so much shit in my head at the time. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it be. Um, he may be gone from us, but he's in a better place. He's um, him and his daughter's in a better place. Him and, his, him and his daughter and the other passengers are in a better place. This world is very fucking toxic. We all know this, right? We all know this. So I just want to say rest in peace, Kobe Bryant and his daughter as well. Uh, it's very, it's very, it's very, it was very tough, you know, for January to end like that. Not to mention you also had Rocky Johnson pass away early in the month as well. Uh, I'm sure... That was a bit tough for uh, The Rock and his family members. All the members of the, you know, of Rock's family. You know, like, it It was, it was, it, was, it must be tough. If you're a fan of Rocky Johnson, um, I'm not going to act like I am. I'm not going to act like I ever was. I'm just, I, I, I respect those who did something, who put work in, whether it's back in the day or now. I respect those that gets in the ring and does his thing, you know. Nice to know that he was the... Him and, I believe, Tony Atlas were the first two African-Americans to become a WWE uh, tag team champion. You know, I think champion overall in WWE. The first black guy to do it. So, gotta give respects and love to Rocky Johnson as well. So, with that being said, okay. Now, shall we talk about news? Should we talk about news? Or should I, actually hold on before I get to the news, I want to talk about a little bit, a little bit. Um, so Universe Mode. Let's talk about that real quick. So you seen I uploaded Takeover. I uploaded SmackDown yesterday. So I'm working on Raw now. Uh, when will the Rumble be up? That that's I'm pretty sure it's a lot of people. That has a lot of people, you know, questioning what's going on whether the rumble's coming or not. 
I'm going to try to get the Rumble out within the next two weeks. The next two weeks. I don't want to, you know, do two. I want to play it. I don't want to go on forever with the Rumble. So I feel like, eh, give it two more weeks and it'll be up, you know? Because February is February. Now that it's February, February is going to be a busy ass month. Think about this. Think about this, okay? We got TakeOver. <laughs> we got WWE Super Showdown in Saudi Arabia. And then we got Revolution. And then we have Elimination Chamber following Revolution in March. And then we have WrestleMania the following month. So, oh, February to March to April is going to be hectic. But it's going to be hectic in a good way. Not to mention, I'm sure Double or Nothing is going to be in uh, in May afterwards, too. So, a lot of shit is about to pop off starting now. But, let's talk about the things that happened in the past. Let's talk about the things that happened at the Royal Rumble. So, people are saying that the Royal Rumble this year was the best one ever. Um, I, well, I'll, I'll leave it with this. If you feel that way, you feel that way. I'm not going to sit here and try to change your mind, change your opinion. Oh, 1992. Oh, 2007. Oh, 2001. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to do that. No, I have no right to sit here and try to change and force it on you to change your mind and say, no, 1992. No, 1990 fucking shit. Fucking 2001, 2007. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I believe it's the best Rumble in two years. There we go. Because 2018 Rumble was fun. 2019, uh, 2019 Rumble was boring. 2020, that was it too. That was a fun Rumble. Uh, Brock Lesnar dominating the, the fucking dance when MVP returned. That, that was funny. And then when Keith Lee came out, oh, that moment with Keith Lee was just glorious. And then you had... Drew McIntyre come out and said, I'm going to eliminate you, you some bitch. And then what do you do? He ricocheted low blow him. Clay, oh, that Claymore kick was beautiful. Claymore kick, let's throw over the top rope. Outside he goes. That was awesome. And then after that, a couple of people come in and get to, you know, run rumble. You know how rumble rumbles get, you know. At certain points, it'll be chill for a bit. And then, what was it, number 21? The Rated R Superstar. Edge, oh my god, the second I heard, you think you know me, I fucking popped, I popped so hard, I was like, I, I just, I just went through a whole flashback in a couple of seconds, watching Edge come out, I'm like, oh my goodness, I, I, I'm seeing him, you know, cutting a promo, like, uh, like him, giving his retirement speech, you know, in 2011, him wrestling at WrestleMania 27 against our brother, the real to open WrestleMania, which by the way, was an atrocity, by the way, you know, like, bro, just seeing edge, you know, he's chiseled, he's fucking ripped, little gray, little crows on his eyes, but the dude is back. Oh my God. I was just like, okay, it edge proved that anyone at a certain at a certain time, if you get an injury, you can come back. Because dude, Edge said that if he rest, if he continued to wrestle after his uh, when he got his diagnostics his uh, from uh, his doctor, he could have been in the wheelchair. He could have been paralyzed if anything. So I was I was like that's what that's what told me. All right, you know what? He ain't wrestling ever again. If he wrestles, he's done. Edge proved that once you, you know, fix yourself up, you know, you ain't got surgery on his neck again. He, uh, he worked out. He did what he could. Now look at him. I knew, I, I should have known the second. Well, well, you know, the thing, the weird thing is, whenever wrestlers cut their hair, you know, it's like, okay, they're done, right? And then when they grow it back, for look at Daniel Bryan, for example. He cut his hair when he retired, right? And then when he started to grow back his hair, he came back. <laughs> How many times have Edge cut his hair? 
and then he came back. And now look at him. He has his long hair again. He's back. Oh my god. I love the WWE at the moment. I just I'm just like in this honeymoon phase as far as WWE goes. Because I I'm just hyped. You know? Um just seeing Edge back is just great. You know, him coming out a little grayer, but he came out and just he he just looked great, dude. I I'm I'm still in shock that Edge is back. Seeing Edge come out, do the pose, new green gear. Oh my God! It just I'm just hyped. <laughs> I don't know what I'm hyped for, but I'm hyped. You know, Edge coming out. You know, wrestled until the the last three, I believe. And uh, McIntyre hit the Claymore on Roman Reigns after Roman eliminated Edge. It, seeing Edge hit, hit a spear on Roman Reigns was phenomenal. It was the same feeling I had when Lashley hit a spear on Roman Reigns. Because I always had this thing in my head like, oh my god, if anyone that has a spear goes up against Roman Reigns, WWE's going to make them not use the spear and make it seem like Roman Reigns is the only guy today can use the spear. Like, you know, I had that weird shit in my head. And seeing Edge use it, I was like, bro... Holy shit. <laughs> I knew when he speared Elias, something was up. I knew it. Oh, my God. The second he speared Elias, I'm like, can he come back? <laughs> I, I, had a, I had that feeling. I, I, I watched that clip over and over again as of late. And I'm like, yo, I think he's coming back. I, I don't know. I, that might be a one-time well, one thing. That's it. Either way. Edge, he came out. He lasted as long as he could. He was in the final three, I believe. And then McIntyre, Claymore kicked Roman Reigns. Chucked him over the top rope. The crowd popped. Seeing McIntyre, back in line. When McIntyre threw Reigns over the top rope and he's spinning around like he's Shawn Michaels in the ring when he won. That was a great moment. And just seeing him point at the WrestleMania sign, it, it was like vindication. It was like, finally, after all this time, you know, McIntyre, in 2018, when he came to Raw, you know, he, he was perceived as the biggest badass on the fucking roster outside of Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman a little bit, right? You know, McIntyre came out with Dolph Ziggler. They became tag team champions, being Ziggler's bodyguard, being Ziggler's uh, Kevin Nash to Shawn Michaels, pretty much. You know, it was pretty much like that. They won tag team titles. Uh, McIntyre, after splitting from Ziggler in 2018, uh, 2019, that's when McIntyre started to fade away. He started to feud with Roman, which was boring, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, did nothing, did nothing, teamed up with Shane McMahon. Uh, he, he was in a, opening, a nice opening match at Extreme Rules with uh, Shane and against Taker and Roman Reigns. So it was a nice, fun match to open Extreme Rules. Um... After that, McIntyre went nowhere, and then now, all of a sudden, I just see him become a babyface, you know, doing the 3-2-1 or the 1-2-3, whatever, you know, he's doing the countdown, and then he's just kicking people's heads off, and I'm like, okay, he's a babyface. You can't, he, you can't boo somebody that does that, that fucking does a chant, and everybody chants along with them, and then they cheer when he kicks your head off. You can't boo that, come on. So... Team McIntyre is a, ba uh, a baby face now. A part of me wants WWE to take his NXT theme that he had before he went to the main roster and use that now. I feel like his current theme is more heelish. The one he had in NXT is the most babyface version of his song than ever. So I think they should switch the theme songs, in my opinion. That's just me. But seeing McIntyre in this spot, coming out on Raw, saying that he he's... He thinks he's dreaming, you know, someone pinch him, feels like it's a dream, he's gonna go on the face, bro, he, he already made the decision, I love this already, that he made the decision, he didn't wait, he didn't be like, you know what, I'm gonna wait to Elimination Chamber, no, 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 he's like, nah, Brock, what's happening, it's me and you, Mania, main event, let's do this, and honestly, if they make Brock Lesnar, honestly, at this point, the main event spot to me at WrestleMania nowadays, it should not mean anything anymore. The reason why I say that is because WrestleMania is the longest show of the freaking year. You ever notice that? WrestleMania last year was five hours and 19 minutes, okay? So, uh, who knows? In Ahoy Mady, WrestleMania 36 in Tampa, Florida, who knows how long this show's going to be? Who knows? But if they do make McIntyre and Lesnar main event, 
if they do make McIntyre and Lesnar main event the show, then Drew McIntyre and Lesnar would be the first men to main event WrestleMania with the WWE Championship since 2016 when the big dog, Roman Reigns, took on the game Triple H. WrestleMania 33, Roman fought Taker. 34, Roman fought Brock for the Universal Championship. And 35 was the women's time. So, if McIntyre gets that spot, he gets that spot, and he's the first guy since Triple H and Roman to main event WrestleMania along with Brock for the WWE title. But what else can main event? Well, Vince wants uh, Roman to main event the show. But nah. Mm-mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Come on, Vince. Don't do that. Don't do that, please. Okay, but before I, I move on, let's speak on why Vince changed from the winners. Drew McIntyre being chosen over Aleister Black. This is... Let's see. Okay. Vince McMahon reportedly made changes to plans for, for the 30-man Royal Rumble match and the 30-woman Royal Rumble match because he wanted to create stronger main events for WrestleMania 36. According to Wrestling Observer Newsletter, the WWE chairman and CEO likely made those changes in the last week leading up to Sunday's big event from Minute Maid Park in Houston. In creating plans leading up to the last week, uh, before the R the Rumble pay-per-view, WWE reportedly had Roman Reigns and Shayna Baszler scheduled to win the two matches. Charlotte Flair and McIntyre ended up winning. Uh, McIntyre versus Lesnar for the WWE title has been announced for WrestleMania 36, while Flair is rumored to challenge NXT Women's Champion Rhea Ripley on the grandest stage of them all, which I am not against. But then again, some people made a good argument, which it's very hard for me to you know, be be with it now. But I'm not going to lie to you. It's better than f fucking Becky and it's better than Bailey. I'll tell you that right now. That's all I care about. It was known about the Observer that the decision has been made to go along, to go all out with McIntyre versus Lesnar at Mania 36, barring any special outside attraction match. Re Reigns versus Universal Champion The Fiend is scheduled for the big event, but not as the main event. Look at that. The original idea for the Men's Rumble was to have Lesnar destroy everyone, eliminating the, th the first 13 competitors until a combination of the low blow from Ricochet, which was payback from their recent TV angle, and Lesnar's low blow kick, and a Claymore kick from McIntyre would eliminate the Beast. The idea was, was that once McIntyre eliminated Lesnar, he didn't need to win the Rumble. And that Reigns could win and then go on to challenge the Fiend. So you would have the two main title matches as somewhat even. However, Vince wanted to establish McIntyre versus Lesnar as the real main event. Which, honestly, that puts a smile on my face. I mean, yeah, JD from New York made a good point that, you know, if you eliminate Lesnar, you don't need to win because that the match is right there. But hearing Vince going all out for McIntyre like this... I'm I'm happy. I I can't I can't disagree with Vince here. I can't. So, so um. However, Vince wanted to establish McIntyre and Lesnar as a real main event, so everything is geared to making the match as strong as possible. I love this. I love this. We noted that we noted before that Alistair Black versus Lesnar was considered at one point as Raw Executive Director Paul Heyman is very high on, on him, and has made Black push a project of his. This feeling at this point is that McIntyre were more over was more over than Black, so they went with McIntyre over the uh, for the big title shot. A major push for McIntyre is in 2020 has been rumored. For many months now. Other matches currently on the books for Mania 36 on April 5th. April 5th? No, it's April 6th. The, yo, y'all getting your, your, your this shit. Oh, oh, no, it's fit. My bad. <laughs> From Raymond James uh, Stadium in Tampa at our Baszler versus Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's title and Edge versus Randy Orton. Vince McMahon, you old coot. The one thing I'll agree on you, agree with you rather, is that he went all out with McIntyre. I appreciate this because 
we all felt that McIntyre is the guy to that you could put you could put all your stock behind and he would be able to go and deliver. He can do that. You let him go and do it naturally. You can't force it upon him. I heard that McIntyre doesn't didn't like that whole Scottish Terminator thing that he was doing. Where he was just like speaking all this random rhetoric, speaking all this random shit, right? He's just going on and using rant like these words that nobody's ever heard of or things that real people in real life would not speak like, you know? But now, now look at him. You hear him? He sounds genuine. He sounds normal. It, it, bless. I can't, I can't disagree. So, I'm glad Vince went all the way with McIntyre. Now, Let's speak on Ring of Honor for a bit. Ring of Honor bringing back the pure championship title. Ring of Honor is bringing back the ROH pure championship in April where the new champion will be determined via tournament. The first night will take place in Columbus, Ohio, and the second will be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Entrance have, has yet to be announced. The title was first created in 2004 and then unified with the world heavyweight title in Ring of Honor after Brian Danielson, who is now Daniel Bryan, ended Nigel McGuinness's 350-day reign of the champions to hold the title, AJ Styles, Doug Williams, John Walters, Jay Lethal, and Samoa Joe. So... I appreciate this. I, I kind of like this. This might make me want to watch Ring of Honor a bit. You know, seeing the, another championship coming in. I, I, I love titles. You know, if, if you bring in a new title, you have my attention instantly. Uh, same thing with the 24-7 title. But they, they should turn that into a TV title. <laughs> That's just me. Have Raw have a TV title. Why not? You have three hours. If you have, no, if you have nothing for the show, you have a TV title that you can just defend on Raw. Boom. There you go. But you have Mojo Raleigh coming out, trying to throw out challenges, but nobody's accepting it, except for Archer. MVP says he's he has wrestled his last WWE match. The former United States champion took out Instagram on Wednesday night and said his final match in WWE took place on this week's Raw in San Antonio, the loss to Rey Mysterio. Quote, one, of, one for the history books, my final WWE, WWE match took place on Monday Night Raw against my close friend and legend, uh, at 619 I am Lucha, who's known as Rey Mysterio on Instagram, I will assume. A great way to close that cha close out that chapter. Chapter. The end of my career looms larger e every month. It's been one hell of a ride. I'm not finished just yet. But soon, very soon, thank you at WWE and hashtag WWE Universe for all the love. What an amazing week I've had, MVP wrote, end quote. MVP made this uh, return, surprise return, at the Royal Rumble uh, on Sunday. Entry number 12 and was tossed out by Lesnar as the 11th elimination uh, after being in for just 24 seconds. Then lost to Rey Mysterio on Raw. It had been reported that MVP was back in the WWE for a few appearances, but nothing long term. It was believed that he would be back more than the Rumble and on Raw, but his new post indicates otherwise. As known to MVP thank Ray after the Rumble match uh, and said he made the return so his son could see him wrestle. So MVP, nice on him though. He pulled a Goldberg. You know, Goldberg came back for his family, his wife and kid, to, you know, see him inside the ring. So... Gotta give love for MVP for that one. I'm glad he's he's done, though. He did look a, little, a bit sluggish on Raw, but, you know, in the end of the day, he's done. Uh, nice to see MVP. I mean, he had a good career, no doubt. WWE, he debuted in 2006. He came out, and uh, he was able to win uh, tag team titles with Matt Hardy. Uh, in 2007, he beat Benoit for the United States title at Judgment Day, I believe, uh, or Backlash. At, at a Backlash or Judgment Day. Either one, he won the title. I think it was Backlash, yeah. He beat him in his home, in Benoit's home, uh, you know, residing hometown. So, he's able to win the, the United States title, hold it for 350 plus days, if not three, uh, if not a whole year, pretty much a whole year. Backlash to Backlash. So, yeah, yeah he had it for a whole year. So, good on MVP, he had a good career, just leave it at that. He's, a, he's, you know, first ever IWGP Intercontinental Champion, by the way, if you do your research, I actually did mine, MVP is the first guy to hold that title, which is crazy, I didn't, I didn't think, I thought Lucha, I thought Lucha Band had that title before that, so he held that, he had to use the first one to hold that title in 2000, I guess, 
10 to 11. Around there. That's crazy. Finally, y'all, Tony Khan reportedly gets special permission from TNT for recent segments on Dynamite. So, uh, for those, for those who have missed it, the January 15th Dynamite episode saw the Inner Circle beat down Moxley after his singles match win over Sammy Guevara, who was a member of the group. The winner of that match was to move on to the number one contenders match with Pac the next week. Which Moxley also won. The post-match beatdown on January 15th saw Jericho remove one of the spikes in his jacket and jab it in the forehead of Moxley. Moxley sold the spike jab as an eye attack and has been wearing an eye patch for some kind of bandage covering since. Khan reportedly went to TAT officials before that episode and got their appro approval for the angle with the spike to the eye, according to Wrestling Observer Newsletter. It was noted that TBS officials were furious back in 1988 when the war when the Road Warriors did the same thing to Dusty Rhodes, which uh, who also who also got in a lot of trouble and lost his WCW job for writing that angle as the Booker. Khan also received approval from TNT for MJF's idea to wear I Bang Dallas's. Daughter t-shirt, which was also on January 15th out of my episode. MJF wrote the shirt to the ring. Wore the shirt to the uh, MJF wore the shirt to the ring for the six-man tag that saw DDP, uh, Dustin Rhodes, and QT Marshall lose to MJF, the Butcher and the Blade. The Butcher and the Blade. The Butcher and the Blade. One is a big man, the other's kind of lame. You know, Butcher and the Blade. There you go. Uh, and I really didn't know DDP's daughter, Lexi Nair, has been working for AW as a backstage interviewer. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, for a few months now, and despite MJF's disrespectful references to her and angles for the feud with Cody, there are good friends, and she got a kick out of his t-shirt idea. The Observer noted that MJF is a big fan of the old-school territory days of pro wrestling and got the t-shirt idea from an infamous I broke uh, Wahoo's leg t-shirt uh, that Greg the Hammer Valentine wore during his feud with Wahoo McDaniel in 1970s. Moxley versus Jericho for the title plus MGF versus Cody are set to take place at AEW Revolution pay-per-view Saturday, February 29th in Chicago, Illinois in Wintrust Arena. So there you go. Yeah. Tony Khan's a smart dude. He's like, you know what? No, I don't think we just do this with an alien. We need to talk. It's like maybe someone told Tony Khan, Ayo fam, yo, the Royal Warriors did some shit with Dusty Rhodes back in the day. And TNT, TBS, they were not having it. They were not having it. So we need to be chill. We need to try asking. And guess what? He asked them for the angle, for approval. They gave it to him. Look at that. Able to do it. Nice. I didn't know that he stabbed him in the forehead. I thought he stabbed him in the eye for real. <laughs> uh, you gotta love wrestling. You gotta love wrestling sometimes. You gotta love wrestling. Should I, should I... Okay, you know what? I'm gonna give you my thoughts on this last one. This last piece of news and I'm out. The Revival reportedly requests another release. Good, 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 good. Scott Dawson, Deathwater both requested the WWE releases again last week, according to Brian Alvarez in the latest episode of Wrestling Games Ever Live. Which, by the way, fuck you, Alvarez, for dissing Naomi. Think I, think I didn't see that shit? Huh? How dare you? You look like the biggest loser with those fucking braids in your head, dude. You... <laughs> Ha! Oh my god, the dude with the glasses looking like Napoleon Dynamite. Fuck out of here. Anyways, there's no word on yet on what the response to the request was. As we've noted, the Revival reportedly first requested their releases back in January 2019 after being unhappy with how they are being used in the company. It was then reported by in May 2019 that both superstars turned down five new year contracts. Five year contracts said to be worth $500,000 per year. Revival did receive a short tag team title reign on Raw and at WrestleMania, and at WrestleMania 35 appearance where they lost the titles to Hawkinson Ryder on the kickoff show. 
After requesting the releases, they but they've been on the lower to the mid cards since being sent to SmackDown in the draft this past October. It was reported back when they first requested their release releases that WWE was not letting talents go to keep them away from signing with AEW. But they have started to grant some releases in the past few months in Cara and Luke Harper, for example. Ha- da- Dawson and Wilder have fe- fueled rumors and speculation after filing to uh, filing for their own trademarks over the past year or so, indicating that they might have they might be planning for a post WWE future. Their contracts uh, with WWE are reportedly expiring in April, but it it's been reported that the WWE. Added another 10 weeks to Wilder's contract due to time being missed in 2016 or 17 rather, 2017, with a broken jaw. The revival did not work. The Rumble match last Sunday and last wrestled on January 17th. Blue Brand episode for a loss to the Usos. Dawson and Wilder will be in action on SmackDown. Blah, 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 blah. And yeah, there you go. Sad. They gotta go. They gotta go. If they stay, no respect. None at all. Like the the, the I, I'm gonna treat you like how I treated Mike Canellas. I will show you no mercy. I will give you all the fury I have within me if you fucking resign with WWE. After all this bitching and complaining for the past year, you cannot resign. Once that contract is up. You out! AEW's waiting for you! FTR, they're right there. They got you. They got you. I'm not saying you're going to change the channel for a lot of people. You're not, you're not going to, you know, raise the ratings or anything. You might. I don't know. But I'm, all I'm saying is, if you resign, fuck you. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. I don't care what you say. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, they're great. They're great. To- no, no, no. They're a bitch-ass tag team. They're not, they're not great to me. Yeah, they could be cool in the ring, but they're bitches outside of it because they're complaining and complaining and complaining and complaining and complaining, but yet they still resign? The same thing my Canellas did. He bitched and moaned and bitched and moaned and then he resigned. Now look at him. Now he's requesting for another fucking release. Fuck out of here with that. Anyways. The Revolver reacts to fans responding to them reportedly requesting a release again from the WWE. Uh, it was reported that Dash and Dawson re- requested a release from WWE last week. No word on yet if WWE has given a response. Going back to January 2019, Dawson and Waters had reportedly asked for the release for the first time. Unhappy with how they are, uh, they along with the tag team division as a whole were being used. In May of that year, they were. it was said that tag team that the tag team turned down a new five-year contract worth 500000 per year. Since then, Revival has filed trademark for the finisher Shadow Machine and hashtag FTRKO. Their WWE contracts are reportedly expiring in April, but it has been reported that uh, WWE added another 10 weeks to Wilder's contract due to the time he missed in 2016 with a broken jaw. Today on Twitter, Dawson commented on the fans reacting to the news of them either staying or leaving. Quote, if we settle, you guys say we're lazy and complacent. If we try to get better, you guys saying we're whining and complaining. Make up your mind. Wow. Don't, don't do that, Dawson. Don't, don't, don't take that shit on us. You guys bitch and moan. And you guys, you know, taking pictures with private party and all this shit, talking about the young bucks on Twitter. If you stay, not only we're gonna say lazy and complacent, but also you're fucking bitches and and you're whipped. You're whipped. You 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 could leave and make yourself better. Cause I know you're gonna make that tag team. That tag team division right now in AEW is so dead. It's almost as dead as the. As the uh, women's division. The women's division is the worst thing about AEW. But the second thing, in, in, at least division-wise, you know, tag team is not really looking good at right now. So, you, could, you guys could obviously make a difference there. 
But if you guys stay with WWE, you're going to be nothing but being put through gimmick matches like fucking Miracle on 34th Street, which wasn't really that bad. But I'm just saying you're going to be stuck doing shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, I'm sure there's other holidays coming up. They're going to put you through that shit as well. You can't resign. You just can't. You know, no, no, no matter what, you just cannot resign. You can't take your your frustrations on us. And fucking try to make us seem like the, the the bad guys around here. But yet you're the ones that's bitching, complaining, and yet you resign. No, you can't do that. You have to leave. You can't just sit there and, 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 and fucking... You can't just sit there and resign and stay. Because then nobody's going to respect you. No one's going to care for you. Honestly. Dead ass. And I'm going to end it there. Because I went over my limit. I tried to go 30 minutes. I went 39. Plus going into 40. Anyways... Thank you guys for watch, uh, listening to the 7 Days Podcast. If you guys can, please hit that subscribe button. Follow your boy on social media, on the Twitter, on the Instagram. Links are in the description. Always check the description. I might even put timestamps in this freaking thing for all I know. I'm trying to change up the format in the 7 Days Podcast now. Anyways, if you guys can, like I, get, like I said, like, subscribe. Follow your boy on the social medias, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank y'all for listening, and I'm out. Later.